Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name's Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel here, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting and spinning. In this episode of the Thread to Men podcast, I have another little sneak peek at knitting the opulent plunge bra that I've just finished version two of, and I have still that raglan pullover on my needles. I'll give you a little bit of an update on. I am wearing a dress I purchased from Target, but it has a zipper down the side so I can show you the updated version of the opulent plunge bra. This is one that I have in testing right now. I'm going to put on the internet today because I do have the very finished final edit of this pattern in place. So it's going to be on the internet very soon. I will link to it below if you're interested in checking it out. And I just wanted to show you version two. So this one is still the smallest size. So this cup shaping has not changed, but I have incorporated cup shaping that goes up um, an extra couple inches or so for the largest size. So the top portion that you see here that cuts off from the back bind off is much wider and taller for sizes much larger than the smallest. So. Um, it is sized for different cups and it has now featured this cross here at the front. So it goes around and pulls in at the front here so it fits much more snug. In fact, this one I might have made a little bit too small because I did go down a needle size from the gauge and from the suggested needle um, because I wanted to see for myself what difference that would make and whether um, gauge being exactly right or slightly smaller impacted the outcome of the pattern, which it does, of course, but um, not by so much. I feel like it's where you can kind of incorporate half sizes almost if you're kind of between two because this uh, pattern repeat is 24 stitches. So there's two inches in difference among each size. So you can incorporate like a one inch difference um, if you go up or down a needle. And I did find too that the straps of my previous version stretched a lot with wear. I did use a superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon 801010 blend yarn. Um, this one is made by Magpie Fibers. It's their strange brew colorway. I adore this color. And I knit shorter straps that are tighter and so they hug the bra on much closer to the body. This one fits more like a sports bra. It's a much less of a plunge. Um, but the keyhole at the front is optional. It is not something that is required. So you can maintain that plunge bra look as shown in my previous video, which I'll link to here so you can check that out. Um, I don't have it on right now with this one. Um, but this is the new and improved version of the plunge bra, which I'm kind of happy with in terms of function. I do think that the other version one is a lot like sexier and cuter on the body, um, but this one is far more functional and I think it's gonna stretch out and just fit a little bit less snug. I think that I um, wish I had stuck with the size five suggested needle and the needle that gives me gauge just to get a sense of how the keyhole changes that without changing two things at once. I regret changing so much in version two. So now I feel like I need to make a version three that has the keyhole, but in size five, five needles, um, like the previous version, whatever. I'm, I'm rambling at this point now. Um, as a knitter and a modifier of knits, I'll never stop tweaking my own designs. <laughs> and if I just don't share it, it'll never be shared. So it's going to go up online very soon. I will link to it below if you're interested in checking that out. If you can't tell, I am starting to sweat. We have one window unit that cools our home and I of course have to turn it off to start recording for you guys because it's just so loud. So we're going to make this episode as brief as possible. I apologize for that. It is August 1st. I cannot believe it. It's just one more month till my vacation and I can't wait. Every year Brian and I we travel to the state of Maine and we stay in the same cabin and we just live off grid in this gorgeous little hand built oasis against a blueberry field and a lake and mountains to hike all around. It's so much fun. Um, 
And this is going to be my easy knitting for that trip, I think, because I haven't really made much progress on it and there's still so much to do. So I just need to continue my stockinette in the round. I've already split for the sleeves. So the rest of this project is very, very easy knitting. And of course, I'm still knitting on uh, Michelle Wong's row cardigan, which I have printed out here. I do like to print my patterns, um, especially charts. And this is gonna be gorgeous. I wonder if I have another, yeah, here's a, picture of the back. So this pattern has an opulent array of cables and it's going to be a slow grower. I haven't done anything, any work on that. I hope that once I get all the details online for this new bra design that I'll just shift my focus back to the complexity of knitting cables flat and joining such a large garment with such a huge shawl collar. <laughs> really like bit off a lot to chew with that design. What am I saying? I'm overheating. <laughs> my brain is fried. Um, but that's my knitting progress. I haven't really been spinning. The last thing I've spun, I'm actually going to step over here and grab. Okay, I actually went over and grabbed way more than I intended to um, because I was reminded of this. This is a cashmere silk and I think merino blend. Um, very imperfectly spun yarn, but very variegated and gorgeous. Has lots of drape. I do hope to make this into some kind of t-shirt or tank top um, because it's just one skein and it's too lovely. Um, this has been kind of just sitting there waiting to be turned into something and I really generally have no clue what to make with it. So if you have any suggestions for a favorite tank top, something that is as seamless as possible would be ideal. Really looking for something to make with this. And this is my most recent spin. This is a woolen spun um, skein with machine prepared fiber. This is Jacob fiber. It's a long wool um, carded up into lovely big pile of almost like robing, I guess you'd call it. And then I have all my hand combed skeins of hand spun too. So, I just don't know what to make with all of these. I don't really make huge sweater quantities all of the time. I more often spin like a single skein that's anywhere from 50 to 150 grams. So I have this, um, not variegated, it's uh, it, it's almost variegated because it's a little thick and thin, but it is a marled yarn. It's two colors, um, two plied together. And then I have this one that I dyed with a few leftover um, eucalyptus from a bouquet. And I have, and that one smells really good. Not like eucalyptus, but just lovely. And I have these skeins too that I've already caked up. And I really do want to knit, mm, this one smells like yarrow. Ugh. Okay, and I need to stop huffing my yarn. But they're all these like buttery yellows and greeny grays um, that I just don't know what to do with. This is a superwash plied with a Cormo. I think I'm gonna do Andrea Mowry's like um, night shift or shifty cowl. I have a dark chocolate brown. I really need to make something with these hand spun skeins. I just don't know what. This is another natural gray, but this is a, a merino, a little more fine fleece and it is hand combed. So it's that worsted prep and this blue. This is from the dye of mulberries from around, um, I think Helen Park or something, anyway. Yeah, so these are just waiting to be worked into a project together. I'm not a huge wearer of pastels, but you know, I really want to work with what I've got. And I have quite a lot at this point. I need to just choose the projects best for them at this point now. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. I feel like I don't have enough of one color to really truly decide on what to do here, but 
I don't know. Do you have any ideas? I, I'm thinking there must be like a, um, maybe like a Stephen West shawl pattern, or maybe the, maybe you have a shawl pattern out there you can link me to, um, to help me check out something with like four or five colors. I did see a gorgeous, um, kind of patchwork. It looks like a two ply jumper weight, um, shawl. I'll, I forget. It's, it's some kind of patchwork color work shawl. Um, maybe I could use my hand spun for something like that. It is a very fine fingering weight. Some of them are a little thicker than others, but they're all generally the same-ish, so I feel like I can mix and match those, even if they're slightly different weight. So, I don't know. If you, if you have a project in mind that you think might be a great pairing for any of this yarn, let me know in a comment below, because I really would love to hear your feedback. That is all for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, do please subscribe to my channel here. And if you enjoy this content, give it a thumbs up. Before we go, I'm going to show you a brief garden tour of things as they are currently in the backyard. It is now July 2021 and I'm clearing out a lot of the garden. I'm keeping everything that is lush and everything that is... Um, you know, met the end of its cycle, I have cleared out. So lots of room to plan for fall and I need to water, but I wanted to quick, take a quick video. I have this cracked pot here that I um, used silicone to try to repair. I don't know if anyone else has ever attempted that, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. I cut back my nettles the other day. Um, this is all a bit of a mess. It's a volunteer something that I'm letting grow and um, I cut back every little kale I had in this bed. I think that they're really going to take off in the fall. Um, and I'm going to put some nasturtiums in that box and add some compost or mulch so it keeps from drying out. But this garden really needs a drink of water. I do not very often water my garden, um, but here we are. The raspberries really need to be uh, cleared out. You can kind of tell which canes are going to die back and not produce fr fruit again and which ones will produce fruit next year as they just grew up over the last 12 months or so. The marigolds were quite fun to grow this year. They are getting um, some like uh, I forget what these are called but it's a type of like mite. I think that they attract them and keep them away from other plants but uh, spider mites that's what I'm thinking of. The Zinnias are falling in towards the sun, which is quite nice. I can see them from the kitchen window there. And I really loved growing flowers this season. The pawpaw trees are growing up so big. Um, and the oregano has really proliferated. That was like a gift from a neighbor. I have another special zinnia here. You can see it doesn't get as much morning sun, so the kind of dew doesn't dry up and it kind of creates a little bit of spotting like that, I think. So um, this is probably not an area I'm gonna replant zinnias next year, but I'll probably do more in that bed there. Uh, the cattle panels, I'll move back really quick. They are really exploding. Um, this one is full on one side. I hope that it'll grow into this little bit of a gap we have here. Um, and these just spring up everywhere. And in this area, they don't get enough light as well. You can tell that they get a little moldy. And I'm gonna relocate some stuff, but I've loved having these flowers here, especially among that chair. We don't sit down here much because there's tons of mosquitoes and it is very, very hot. But I do love to look out the window at these flowers. We have asparagus, which I hope to take over that whole area. Basil, cucumbers, beans. I love to grow these long bean varieties. They're super interesting um, and we just have basil here and there the kale plant has gone to seed and is now sprouting up so i'm not sure i'll just like let that go for a while i put some herbs down so that these beds weren't bare all the time and i'm really glad that i have the dill and the cilantro growing near these cattle panels so that there is oh, there's a wasp that freaked me out <laughs> um so that they can be kind of brought up into those cattle panels to stand upright. And we have horseradish here that just comes back with a vengeance every summer. We have, of course, my compost bins 
and that silver can I keep shredded paper for when I run out of leaves. Um, I collect leaves in the fall and winter and then run out by end of summer. So I bring home paper from work um, that's shredded to maintain a good balance in the compost bin. I threw some kale in this area. It didn't really take off, but I think it's gonna make a great fall little garden if it gets enough sun. And we have another pawpaw tree. There's a third pawpaw tree among those berries there. Um, and pawpaws kind of grow as an understory tree. So I think it'll probably do fine. We'll see. Uh, the blackberries are ripening. The birds love them. And the St. John's wort really, really, really needs a pruning, but I'm gonna wait till the fall for that. And um, so this kind of area isn't gonna get cleaned up until then, um, but I'm going to just try to keep all the, you know, drying up leaves trimmed back so that there's no unwanted mess. And this is a little project I'm working on right now and that'll be cleaned up soon. And I hope to water this garden and give her a good drink. I wanna thank you all for joining me on my quick little garden tour. Um, tell me what you're growing, what you plan to grow. I just bought some new seeds to start for late summer and fall planting. I'm really excited about that. I hope I might fill these bins with something. I'm not sure what, cause they do dry out quickly. And this one is starting to kind of fall apart. It's not the best built. Anyway, I hope you all have a good day and that you take care. And I do want to give you a little sneak peek of our front yard too. I've been working hard on just clearing some space for some fall planting. So there's not plants in every area yet. And there's a lot of plants that won't be there very soon. My tomatoes are almost spent. So I want to give you a little image of how things are looking out front. At the very end of the summer season, it's a great time to get plants at a really affordable price, even if it means you have a limited time with them. These are some beautiful annuals. We have potato vine and all kinds of varieties. I always forget the name of these plants, but they're pretty common. You can find them almost everywhere. And these containers are on sale. I got a great price on each of them for what they are. Um, and I'm obsessed with those right now. And over here, I've been preparing some beds. We had a bunch of perlite that um, had been used and I wanted to recycle it into a potting mix. So there's a little bit heavy of the perlite there, but we're gonna top it off with more compost. So it'll be a little bit more mixed. We have a very heavy clay soil. You can see I pretty much killed most of the grass, but um, I reseeded some clover in those spots, but it'll fill in very quickly. And I have a bunch of spring bulbs on their way in the fall to plant. So um, everything in this front is fairly new. Last fall we planted that um, larger plant. I forget the names of all of these. <laughs> I'm not a huge plant expert, but um, that tallest one on the right there we planted last fall. The one in the very center I planted a, a couple years ago. And the arborvitae, I have, is that the name of it? I forget. Um, I planted that last spring. Um, it kind of died off in the front there. I, I wondered if a cat was like marking it. Um, but I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying some things out. Of course, there's periwinkle as a ground cover that is going to continue to spread throughout the rest of the bed. But I just recut those beds um, to be a little bit bigger or that bed to be bigger and then of course around our new tree here this is a red bud tree and it had lots of tomatoes growing fewer tomatoes now than before and um, there's a few squash coming up so that is the front yard and we'll see how it continues in the fall and later on spring. And that is truly it for this week's episode. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter as Taylor E. Owen, and I am Taylor Knits on TikTok. Thanks again for being here, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Good morning, Skip.